That's right, Gigi Gorgeous as well as Patrick Starr have responded to Trisha Paytas coming out as trans. So in this video, we're gonna talk about it, but unlike some of the other drama channels, I promise by the time you leave this video, you're gonna be a little bit smarter. What's up everybody, this is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I try to do is take different topics going on in the YouTube community and try to look at them from different angles that other channels aren't. I like to get people's wheels turning a little bit. All right, so if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And if you're not yet, make sure you follow me over on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul. All right, so every video I do, 20% goes towards a charity. So this video, once again, we will be donating 20% of the ad revenue to The Trevor Project. The Trevor Project is an amazing organization that goes towards helping LGBTQ youth. So I will also provide a direct donation link down in the description and in the pinned comment below. But feel free to share this video because the more views it gets, the more we can donate to The Trevor Project. All right. Right? So yeah, this drama with Trisha Paytas is still ongoing. Uh, if you missed it, I released a video yesterday and even yesterday after I released my video, she popped up trending again on Twitter for some of her responses. And yeah, Gigi Gorgeous as well as Patrick Starr have chimed in. I've seen some other people saying that they're going to comment on the situation as well. All right, but again, I wanna dive into a different aspect of this story. So before we jump into that, I have a question for you. Feel free to pause it if you need to answer it, all right? But let me know your thoughts in the comments that if someone is diagnosed with a mental illness, how responsible are they for their actions? As we know, Trisha said this. Isn't that the fun part though about dating someone with like borderline personality of like, you don't know what mood they're gonna be in. Are they gonna be happy? Are they gonna be mad? So again, in the comments below, let me know if somebody has a mental illness, how responsible do you feel they are for their actions? All right, we'll come back to that later in this video. Okay, so anyways, yes, uh, a friend sent me the video from Gigi Gorgeous. Um, I actually didn't know about her, but I just went and watched her video. But yeah, I'll link her video down in the comments below or in the description below. Um, basically, Gigi Gorgeous, uh, said that she actually did talk with Trisha and long story short, she is defending Trisha and talking about, you know, the, the other aspects of being trans and dealing with uh, gender identity struggles and all of that. So if you wanna check out her video, it'll be linked down in the description. All right, but then Patrick Starr was just on Twitter and this is the back and forth he had with Trisha. So he retweets her and says, are you effing stupid? Being trans is not a costume. Just because I wear a wig and lashes does not make me a woman for the time that I play dress up. Apologize now. And Trisha Paytas responded, and just because I have boobs and a vagina does not make me a woman. You have no right to tell me which gender I am, how judgmental and hurtful. I've been in therapy for a long time for this. You do not know the struggle I've had dealing with how unhappy I am in my gender. And then Patrick Starr sent out a couple more tweets. He, he said sorry for that initial tweet, and he said that he sent a DM, all right? So first, let's talk about a little bit of the psychology as to why this story went viral. So let me introduce you to this guy. This is Professor Jonah Berger, all right? So he is fascinated and has dedicated his life to trying to understand why ideas catch on, why things spread, all right? He's the author of two books. One is called Invisible Influence. The other one is called Contagious. Both are great books. He actually has another book coming out later this year or early next year, but anyways, phenomenal, phenomenal author as well as teacher and everything like that. But anyways, he has done so many studies and one of the studies he did, they went through thousands and thousands and thousands of articles, him and his team, to try to understand which ones went viral, which ones were shared the most, and why were they shared the most. So 
something they discovered is emotion plays a huge role in this, all right? That might not be news to you, but they've managed to narrow it down to certain emotions. So first, they thought it was just positive emotions that made things go viral, right? Such as happiness or even awe, okay? So people are more likely to share, you know, news or videos that will make somebody happy. Pictures of cats, cat videos, I'm a fan of cats and corgi butts, all that kind of stuff. But anyways, uh, another one is awe, all right? If you can invoke the feeling of awe, like, oh my God, this is amazing, right? That's why a lot of science stories get shared. But what they found out, it wasn't just these positive emotions that get shared a lot, it's also a few specific negative emotions, all right? One of them is anxiety and the other one is, you guessed it, anger, all right? So why are people all talking about this Trisha Paytas coming out as trans? Well, it's invoking a lot of anger in many people because this is a very controversial subject. It's a very touchy subject when people talk about it, all right? But it is inciting a lot of anger in people, which is having more and more people share it, okay? I don't wanna jump into the theories about whether or not Trisha Paytas is just doing this for attention or because she has a new music video coming out. I've seen some comments about that. But anyways, I just want you to kind of also monitor your own behavior and understand why you're sharing what you're sharing and why everybody's talking about certain things, all right? So now, into the next topic. Remember, Trisha Paytas said this. Isn't that the fun part though about dating someone with like borderline personality and like you don't know what mood they're going to be in. Are they going to be happy? Are they going to be mad? So one of the most popular books on borderline personality disorder that has more research than any other book that I've come across is called I Hate You, Don't Leave Me by Hal Strauss and Gerald Kreisman. Okay. Now, one of the hallmark symptoms of borderline personality disorder that they discuss and anybody with borderline personality disorder may be able to tell you a little bit more about this specific symptom, but one of the, the, the trademark symptoms is having a lack of sense of self, okay? So if Trisha Paytas was in fact diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, she may have issues with having a sense of self. And what you find is a lot of people who struggle with this, they will try to latch on to different identities, all right? They become a social chameleon, but when they don't feel like they know who they are, they try to find an identity to latch onto. Now, what's interesting is this is actually not all that uncommon when it comes to celebrities, people in the public spotlight. Here are some of the celebrities that have been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. You got Marilyn Monroe, Amy Winehouse, Britney Spears, Lindsay Lohan, Courtney Love, Angelina Jolie, and there are many more. All right, so again, the question is, if somebody is diagnosed with a mental illness, how responsible are they for their actions, all right? So me personally, when I ask myself this question, and those of you who don't know me, I'm a recovering drug addict and alcoholic. I've been clean and sober for seven years. I also worked in a drug and alcohol treatment center for a little over three years and everything like that. And this is a question that I always ask myself because as a recovering drug addict, there was a lot of terrible things that I did in my uh, addiction, and I did use that as an excuse, right? And eventually, it came to a point where I had to take responsibility for my actions and get better, right? So now I try to empathize a bit more when I see people who have been diagnosed with something, uh, such as a mental illness, and try to understand. So what I personally do, and here's a, a tool that might help you as well if you have somebody in your life who struggles with a mental illness, is I try to look at it as a physical illness, all right? And I ask myself how I would react to situations if it was a physical illness, all right? So just for example, let's say you had a loved one who, um, was going through cancer treatment. They were going through chemotherapy. Chemotherapy can make people very sick and they can throw up and everything like that. Let's say this person threw up on you, all right? How mad would you be? How responsible would you feel that person was for throwing up, all right? I just think it's really fascinating how we look at physical illnesses so much different than mental illnesses. My theory on that is because we can see it. 
all right? We can see physical illness. We can see what's happening, but mental illness with how the brain functions and how the different brain regions are actually acting, we can't see it, right? So we blame the person, okay? So again, I want you to answer the question or ask yourself, how responsible is a person for their actions when they're struggling with a mental illness. In Trisha Paytas's case, something that's been coming up a lot, is she talks about how much therapy she's been going through this year, all right? She's opened up about how she um, went to a, a psych hospital earlier this year. She's talked about going through therapy and everything like that, all right? So how responsible do you think she is for her actions and the things that she says? And do you think she's putting in the work to try to change this or work on it, all right? But anyways, again, don't forget, share this video. 20% of the ad revenue will be going to The Trevor Project, all right? But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And I wanna send out a huge, huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel in different ways, such as through Patreon or buying my books or merch, whatever it is, you're all amazing, all right? Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.